The climate emergency is not news to anyone anymore. In fact, we never had so much information about the climate. Since the 90s, we have the IPCC reports, which we all know about, which give a comprehensive assessment of the state of climate change and the, consens and the scientific consensus around it. However, also since the 90s, we have added one trillion tons of CO2 to the atmosphere. And in social sciences, we call that the climate action gap, because climate action um, is not going to the fastest speed of the quality of the information that we have about the climate. So among all the causes that explain the climate action gap in, in climate and air quality services, we, we focus on one specific cause, which is the usability gap. The usability gap is when you produce information, but this information is not tailored to the user needs. In our daily lives, I think we all can imagine of products um, that we know that are not make for the user. And for instance, we have here a mug in which you would take your eyes out if you would drink coffee, or this baby that only looks at the butts of the puppies. In climate products, we also have this type of example. So we have, for instance, here put just two examples, uh, just as the UK's climate change risk assessments, which is they are usable, but they are unused by the users. So how do we close this gap? And here I would like to present the knowledge integration team. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, we are the no uh, knowledge integration team. Uh, we are the bridge between science and society. And our main function is to close all this gap information that between science and society so that all the great inventions that our scientists of climate service and their quality bring to our society could be tailored made to our users. To do that, we have the luck to be consistent from too many backgrounds, different backgrounds, such as uh, environmental economy, product, and de product designs and service design, UX, uh, dissemination, communication, expertise, uh, policy engagement, and too many. Forget, uh, forgive me the ones I didn't mention. <laughs> and uh, all this information, knowledge behind help us, allow us to understand and see all the challenges we are trying to solve from different perspectives. And also allow us, this help us to solve and create and come up with creative solutions for our society. We, for, to do that, we must put ourselves in our user shoes. <laughs> it's important to see what they face with uh, their eyes, empathize with them, so we can be able to, to create solutions adapted to their context and to, their, uh, to be useful for them. Also, we are curious people. We love to learn new things. At the end, we are, we are science and technology, so we, must, we want to be updated all the time so we can provide the better service uh, for our society. And the must is a must to all the solutions we create to be accessible to everyone. Our guide, the infinity. <laughs> we love, we want all the time to, with our users, the collaboration and work together is the key of success. We co-explore, we co-create, we co-develop, we co-evaluate and share knowledge all the time since the beginning till the end with our users, stakeholders, and all the team. How we do that? Let's find out. Thank you. These are some examples of the different methods that we use when we uh, reach out to the users. They go from behavioral to attitudinal, from qualitative to quantitative. It depends on the project, the method that we use, and, well, another one of the little secret weapons that we use is coffee. Because a lot of times, whenever we start a project, we start with the interviews with the users. We want to know them more. We, we start like, let's have a coffee and talk about you know, climate and vector-borne diseases, air quality and government. 
just some examples. So, nothing about us without us. This is a phrase that comes from in the Roman antique that's called nickel nobis sine nobis. This means nothing without us, uh, nothing about us without us, because it reminds us of the policy. You cannot do policy without the people that are being, uh, without the people involved that are going to be part of this policy. These are some examples of the projects that we're working on and about involving the users from the beginning, just to create, like to close the gap, the usability gap. You cannot create a service for students without involving them since the beginning. You cannot create a climate service for farmers in Africa without involving them since the beginning. These are, and we would like to share some examples, just brief uh, examples of some other projects. Of course, remember, this is uh, work that we do with all the departments, and we have the luck to work with a lot of you here today. This is the VTGOs. This is a project that uh, involves observation and climate services for the wine sector. Uh, this is some examples of the different outreach and communication things that the, the team does. This is an example of a tool that we made for the WMO Barcelona Dutch Regional Center, where you can explore it's the tool to explore the models, to compare, to evaluate, and to cross with observation data. This is a, an application that we made for, that we're making for students to learn about the basic concepts of air quality, where they'll be able to use augmented reality and explore the forecast that the Calliope team is working on. And this is the soon to be launched uh, Calliope new website and the tool uh, where you'll be able to see the pollutants, the different forecasts, and expect it soon. And thank you. These are just some examples, but if you want to learn more, you can see a bit more about our projects and or invite us a coffee. Thank you. Thank you.